So the second case is a term baby, 39 plus 4 weeks, 3.7 kilo, born by emergency cesarean for fetal distress and meconium stain liquor. The baby was born flat, which means the baby did not have any respiratory effort. Oropharyngeal as well as endotracheal suction was done and meconium was aspirated from the uh, trachea as well. The baby needed uh, mask ventilation for two minutes after the trachea was suctioned. The heart rate was maintained. Abgar score was five and eight at one and five minutes and the cord pH was 7.1, which does confirm the fetal distress that was noted. The baby was transferred to the NICU. Baby started grunting and uh, needed 40% oxygen to maintain saturation. The chest appeared overinflated and the abdomen was scaphoid. And uh, this is because the meconium has been passed in the womb and the abdomen is relatively empty. Chest appears overinflated because meconium, which is aspirated into the airway, causes a ball valve mechanism where the air can go into the lungs, but the return back is blocked by the ball valve type plug. So it leads to overinflated lungs. So this is typical of meconium aspiration pneumonia. The most important part here is it becomes a meconium aspiration syndrome if the pneumonia leads to pulmonary hypertension, persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn because the bile acid radicals in the meconium and the other chemicals may irritate the pulmonary vessels to cause vasoconstriction. And these babies are hypoxic and hypoxia doesn't allow the normal reversal of the pulmonary vasculature dilatation. So pulmonary hypertension uh, persists and that's called persistent pulmonary hypertension and it can be a severe condition. So we have to use caution in the use of CPAP and uh, you may consider an early chest X-ray to rule out pneumothorax before you start CPAP. So it's not essential if clinically and by cold light it's normal. Uh, you should avoid hypoxia because of the risk of worsening pulmonary hypertension and uh, temperature should be maintained. If there is birth asphyxia, you, you should avoid hyperthermia definitely and hypothermia can complicate uh, the picture as well. So if you are planning to cool a sick baby with meconium aspiration and PPH and that may be a relative contraindication. We should aim for saturation in the high 90s, 95 to 98 percent in these cases. Support the ventilation as need be and because these babies are likely to need multiple blood gases, blood pressure monitoring, you may need umbilical arterial line. And uh, surfactant therapy should be considered where uh, we have a uh, high oxygen requirement. So more than 50 percent oxygen, it's one of the secondary indications for uh, surfactant therapy where because the meconium in the airway prevents efficient recycling of the surfactant, there is secondary surfactant deficiency. Meconium aspiration is more common in term and post-term babies and 10 to 15 percent of labor is complicated by meconium stain liquor. 10 percent of the uh, babies who have been born through meconium stain liquor may develop meconium aspiration pneumonia and syndrome. This is more likely in uh, babies where there is fetal distress. So uh, most of the meconium stain liquor happens when you allow uh, pregnancies to go past the 40 week stage that is a post term and uh, there is a spontaneous uh, passage of the meconium right to the end of the intestine and they pass freely when there is uh, labor related pressure. However, if it's passed in the 37 or 38 weeker, it's more likely to indicate uh, abnormal uh, circulation of fetal distress. The presence of meconium stain like respiratory distress and chest X-ray findings with or without pulmonary hypertension is a meconium aspiration syndrome. And typically the X-ray picture is patchy over inflation with fluffy opacification. So you have a chemical pneumonitis and it's not uncommon after meconium aspiration or even like a respiration to have the CRP and other inflammatory markers going up even though there is no confirmed infection. And it does come down fairly quickly after the pneumonitis results. So you don't need to treat these babies with antibiotic for a prolonged duration because it's the chemical pneumonitis which has caused the inflammatory marker to go up. So if the typical picture suggests that baby did not have evident infection, you can stop the antibiotics by five days. So the chest X-ray uh, picture, this is the fluffy infiltrates. This baby is incubated as well and has an umbilical arterial line most probably. The supportive management is similar to respiratory distress syndrome. So ventilation and consider surfactant therapy aim for higher saturations in view of the risk of pulmonary hypertension. Plus the baby is not at risk of BPD or retinopathy being a term baby. Inhaled nitric oxide therapy for an IPH and should be considered where your oxygenation index goes more than 15 to 20. 
it was 25 as a cutoff before, but nowadays we are more aggressive with nitric oxide treatment um, because if it works, you can avoid unnecessary overventilation and uh, lung damage. Even meconium aspiration babies can have chronic lung disease and the disease is severe. The most severe cases need uh, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, which is only available in very few centers. And if the baby is so sick and you don't have a referral center, we may lose the baby.